This is KGW News at 11. Welcome to KGW News at 11. I'm Art Edwards. We begin with some news about former President Jimmy Carter. He will start receiving hospice care at home. His foundation, the Carter Center, made the announcement earlier today. Here's NBC's Monica Alba. Tonight, former President Jimmy Carter at home, surrounded by those who love him most. The Carter Center announcing he decided Saturday to receive hospice care instead of additional medical intervention after a series of recent hospital stays. The oldest living president turned 98 in October and will spend the rest of his time in Plains, Georgia, with Rosalind, his wife of seven decades, by his side. Every question was, how did you live with that man so long? <laughs> In his 80s, Mr. Carter was diagnosed with melanoma that spread to his liver and brain, defying the odds with the help of an experimental drug. And through it all, always keeping perspective on the fragility of life. I just thought I had a few weeks left. But I was um, surprisingly at ease. You know, I, I've had a, great, a wonderful life. I've had thousands of friends and, and uh, I've had an exciting and adventurous and gratifying existence. A man of deep and enduring faith, the former Democratic president dedicated himself to service after one term in office, building homes for those in need and fighting for human rights and democracy. On Saturday afternoon, the 39th president's grandson tweeting, the Carters are at peace and as always, their home is full of love. Carter has made several trips to visit Oregon in 1978. He was met by anti-nuclear protesters in the Rose City. And after Mount St. Helens erupted in 1980, then President Jimmy Carter described the aftermath of the eruption, calling it a great loss. Carter is 98 years old. He is the oldest living former American president. Let's take a look now at our other national headlines tonight. A Mississippi sheriff says a lone gunman killed six people, including his ex-wife and stepfather, across multiple locations in a small rural town near the Tennessee state line. The shootings happened on Friday at a convenience store and also at two homes. Now, at this point, a motive is unclear. The suspect has been identified as 52-year-old Richard Dale Crum. He is now in jail and he faces a capital murder charge. It is likely that more charges will be added to this case. Today, U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken met with China's top diplomat. Blinken warned China that the U.S. would not tolerate violations of its airspace again. In the meantime, Blinken says that China's diplomat did not apologize for the surveillance balloon flight over the U.S. After the meeting, the secretary spoke to Chuck Todd from Meet the Press about China's response. You can watch the full interview on Meet the Press tomorrow morning. It has been nearly a year since the war in Ukraine started. Today in Manhattan, the Archbishop of New York and the Ukrainian Catholic Archbishop of Philadelphia held a service at St. Patrick's Cathedral. The religious leaders led a prayer service to mark the day. Other religious figures and some Ukrainian soldiers who were wounded in the war were also in attendance. A choir sang hymns in Ukrainian during the service. Russia began its full-scale invasion of Ukraine on February 24th, 2022. Our top local story tonight, a Multnomah County Sheriff's deputy is on administrative leave now after shooting and injuring a man that the Sheriff's Office says was running around early this morning firing a gun in Troutdale. Alma McCarty brings us the latest. Early Saturday morning, just after 1.30, deputies first got word about an armed suspect reportedly shooting at windows at this Home Depot here on Southeast Stark Street. But ultimately, the situation ended here behind the store and in front of homes in this neighborhood. After several hours on scene, deputies took down tape and cleared out as neighbors like Timothy Poliak processed what happened just outside their front doors in the middle of the night. I was, you know, I was falling asleep and then my mom just runs into my room screaming. I'm like, yo, what's going on? And she's like, they're shooting outside. I thought it was an active shooters. So I didn't know what was going on. After instructing employees in the store to stay down and stay inside, Multnomah County deputies and Gresham police officers found the suspect and told the man to drop his weapon. Investigators say the situation escalated from there and a deputy shot the suspect. I just look out the window and I just see a lot of cop cars and a man laying on the ground. 
Um, my cousin lives on the other street behind, and I check my phone. I see he texted me, and he's like, yo, what's going on? Did you hear that? And I was like, what, what, what did you hear? He just said, I just heard police get on the ground and right after, like, a loud gunshot. The sheriff's office said the man was taken to the hospital straight away and treated for his injuries. Within hours, he was out and booked into the Multnomah County Detention Center on charges of unlawful use of a weapon and other crimes. The deputy who fired their weapon was put on leave, which is standard protocol pending the results of an investigation. No one else was injured. You know, when there's shooting right in front of your next door neighbor's house, it's like, whoa, it's kind of eye opening. So um, I'm not surprised about what happened. I mean, I'm not here to say if they made the right choice to shoot him or not. But from the sounds of it, it sounds like it was justified if he was not complying and if he's just firing out shots. I'd rather that guy, you know, be put into custody and not be shooting around my house. The East County Major Crimes Team and the DA's office are leading this ongoing investigation. In Troutdale, Alma McCarty, KGW News. Portland police have arrested the driver who allegedly struck and killed 26-year-old Ashley Diane McGill last summer. Police say that Kenneth, Kenneth Joseph Freeman lost control of his car during an illegal street race. Police arrested him on Thursday morning on a warrant for second-degree manslaughter. He was booked into the Multnomah County Jail. McGill's mother, Misty Nicholson, says the arrest is helping her heal. I don't, I don't think he's a, a cold-blooded killer. I don't. But um, he had a family, and uh, that, yeah, that was my baby. Nicholson says that she found out about her daughter's death when police told her three days after it happened. She said the medical examiner told her family that McGill likely died instantly because of the speed of the car. Now to an update after, a fr after some frightening news from North Portland. It all started with what seemed to be gunshots and then things were thrown off an apartment balcony. Then there were flames and neighbors being told not to go outside. The new tonight, Portland police have shared the name of the suspect in this case. He is Brent B. Lusted from Portland. Lusted is now in custody, faces multiple charges, including arson and unlawful use of a weapon. Our Catherine Cook explains what happened. Fire jutting from this eighth floor apartment in St. John's Friday evening. It was the last in a series of wild and alarming events to unfold near Cathedral Park. It started around 1.30. That's when police responded to the Shrunk Riverview Tower on North Syracuse. Callers reported a man in a mental health crisis throwing things from his balcony, including furniture. When police showed up, they say the man answered the door holding a rifle before closing the door on them. Officers backed off to regroup and then things escalated. And we've uh, heard multiple shots fired from inside the apartment. Sergeant Kevin Allen says none of those shots were fired outside the apartment, but at times the suspect stepped onto the balcony holding the rifle. For that reason, police issued a shelter in place order for anyone within four blocks of the building. They also activated tactical units and crisis negotiators. A situation we consider to be an armed barricaded subject with a rifle. Uh, in an elevated position in a highly populated area. So we have a, a tremendous amount of concern for public safety in this situation. He's really pissed off, very, very, very pissed off and seems like he's off his meds. Brooke Rose Call says her boyfriend knows the suspect and saw him with a rifle on Thursday. Matter of fact, it is a pellet gun. It is not a shotgun. Um, they're both uh, pellet guns and because um, my man actually um, uncogged it or whatever, but we didn't have no clue. He was like, like gonna go nuts or anything. Just before five, things took another turn. Police say the suspect started a fire on the balcony. It grew fast. Fortunately, firefighters responded from just a block away. Meanwhile, officers loud hailed the suspect from the hallway. He came out and officers arrested him. I mean, it's heartbreaking for everybody else that lives there. Cookie Lindstrom works across the street. She believes the same man showed up outside her salon on Monday in crisis and once again carrying a rifle. Said he was gonna shoot who it was that broke into his apartment and stole all his money. I talked him down, got him calmer, he appreciated it, he said thank you for caring, blah, blah, blah. And then when I saw this, I just, I felt in my heart it was him. That was Catherine Cook reporting. There were no reported injuries in this, but police say that one person experienced a medical issue while they were evacuating residents during the fire.